So my dad is our designated cutter, and he requested a uh, his notepad and his clipboard. I don't know where his notepad or his clipboard. There's his clipboard right there. Anyway, he wanted his notepad too. The joke's on him though, because I have a special little notepad up my sleeve. <laughs> uh, there's the part number if you want to get some Evinrude uh, post-it notes. And in case you missed it on the bag, Evinrude went ahead and put it on the post-its himself. That's that's pretty funny. I'm gonna see what he says about this. All right, this video is proudly sponsored by nobody because advertisers don't uh, give me money for anything. Now, I often ask myself, would I even take it? Because usually you have to throw in... I don't know, usually, but... These crackheads walking through my place. Well, anyway. So where we last left off, the trusses were installed. Yesterday, painted all of the truss tails. A coat of primer, two coats of paint. Since these are going to be the finished product, they're going to be not exposed, but there. Painted some 2x4s. Again, primer and two coats of paint. That way they don't rot or anything on us. We're going to install the blocking, and as we go, hopefully, install the, uh, the waffle board onto the walls and see how it goes. So we have these little stops made up to keep the uh, blocking all nice and even. There's going to be an inch of styrofoam followed by three-eighths of stucco. So we have that about an inch and three-eighths out from the wall. So when the stucco goes on, it meets right in the middle of that board. Gramps is going to measure and cut. And I will clamp and install and nail, and we'll see how this goes. All right, here's your uh, here's the clipboard you wanted in your post-it notes. We, uh, we already had OSB on this side, right? Yeah. And did you measure to see where yeah. uh, one... Yeah. You don't like your post-its? Yeah, great. Yeah, no? Yeah, he didn't care about the post-its. All right, bright and early. Let's uh, let's install some OSB. Where we last left off, we had some uh, IKEA furniture nailed to the wall, so that's good and done. Uh, we're going to finish the 
roof line here, the roof blocking, I don't know what it's called. So we're gonna install that today and we should get it done today and I don't know, maybe we'll do some more of the uh, furniture panels here. Well, let's pause for a moment talk about the nail gun. I bought a Porter Cable framing nailer. The uh, cost was $199 at Home Depot. Bought it in October, did a couple of projects before starting the house. So combined total, I've shot over 12,000 nails through that gun. Yesterday, after finishing up that uh, truss blocking, it just started leaking air everywhere. So that, that is kind of the end of it. Now. Should the gun have lasted longer? Absolutely. Was it user error? Probably. Now that airline sits in the sand, it gets plugged in and unplugged frequently when we move it around. I'm guessing a grain of sand got inside of there and probably uh, stuck a seal or a valve or an o-ring or something and just caused it to leak air. But it had a year warranty, so I took it back to Home Depot. Home Depot, I then noticed, dropped the price to 129 which kind of sucked because, you know, I paid 200 for it. Uh, they didn't want to return it right away. They wanted to verify that it actually was broken. So I took it over to the tool rental area. The guy plugged it in, unplugged it instantly. Said, yep, it's not supposed to be leaking air everywhere like that. Called returns. Returns gave me my money back, 200 plus tax. So that was good. The thing is, I didn't really care for that gun. As I've been using it, the recoil really starts to wear down on my hands here. Like, if you if you see, it's it's not fun. Now, I know I have sensitive, girly little hands. So aside from that, it's, it's still rubbing through quite a lot. So I wanted to get a different gun. Uh, Hitachi dropped their Hitachi name, and now it's Matabo HPE, which I'm guessing is the parent company, even though there's a parent company for Matabo. I don't know how that works. Anyway, they dropped the prices of all their tools, which is why I bought that 12-inch miter saw, because it was you know on par with the uh, Home Depot Ryobi brand stuff. So... I saw the fra another framing nailer while I was there, and I went and picked it up for the little price of $150. After taxes, I think I pocketed like 40 something dollars extra, and I got a gun that I probably am going to like more. It's about the same height here, or profile, only you get that much more. Maybe, maybe two and a half, three inches. Just enough to make it a little more comfortable to fit between the 16 on center studs. Secondly, it, it just looks like a better gun. It really does. Now, as I mentioned with my soft little delicate girly hands, see where the gun's been rubbing? This has rubber all the way down right there. So in the recoil, at least I have a little piece of rubber there. So hopefully that'll help with the uh, hand fatigue. So we'll see how this goes. All right, first nail. Let's see how it goes. Sounded good. Sounded good. All right, second attempt. There we go. Right through the right through the table. Okay. So far, so good. Leg. Well, now it's just a simple matter of painting all of the uh, fascia boards. And there's quite a bit of them, 14 in total. So it'll be, it'll be a while. Now a framer would just throw this stuff up and let the painter do it. Now it, it warps. It's not. It's not perfect stuff. It's right now. It's nice and straight. Put it up there. Let's sit out in the uh, weather for a few days. It won't be nice and straight for long, and it rots fairly quickly. But anywho, doing it the way I'm doing this house, primary it down here on the floor and painting it, and then putting it up should make it last quite a bit longer. <laughs> 